So we are at the point of our agenda where I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our final former, formal speaker before our official closing remarks. I think you've seen over the course of these four days the real spirit of the CPTR partnership and indeed the CPTR workshop itself is to provide a forum where all different perspectives from all the important sectors who are contributing to TB regimen or TB diagnostic development can be heard and we can share information about the challenges that we face. I thank all of you for participating in that in the last four days. But our closing speaker, as we do every year as part of this annual workshop, is really going to share the most important voice, as Jim just mentioned, and that is the voice of the patient. So I am very pleased to present to you Dr. Tiang Zun Ting. She is a physician at the Clinical Research Center as part of the Malaysian Ministry of Health. She has traveled a very long way today to be with us to share her experience because she is also a multi-drug resistant TB survivor. So she has a lot of firsts that she's going to share with us today. As I mentioned, this is her first CPTR workshop. We hope it will not be her last. This is her very first trip to the United States just to be here with us. And this is also her very first time talking to an audience this large. So I have absolutely assured her that we understand the courage that it takes to speak to a room like this and to share a very personal story following all of these great scientific and technical presentations. So please help me warmly welcome her to the stage. Thank you, Tiang. First of all, I would thank CPTR for inviting me to all the way to U.S. to share my experience. I would also like to thank everyone here who have made great efforts uh, and do, done a lot of hard work for TB. Okay, uh, I think all of you know where Malaysia is. So uh, I'm from actually from uh, from Borneo Island. I'm from Kuching, Sarawak, a small city located in the Borneo Island. I came from a middle income group. My dad is a businessman and my mom is a housewife. I underwent my primary and secondary school education in Sarawak, Malaysia. And subsequently, I underwent medical school in First Moscow State Medical University in Russia. So I was in Moscow, Russia for six and a half years. It is a very beautiful place, I would say. And I eventually graduated in June 2011. So I decided to went, go back to my country and serve my country. So now I would like to share some information, uh, some tables on the burden of disease in my country. As you can see, uh, tuberculosis is in the top five communicable disease in Malaysia. It's ranked second in this table, but it has the highest mortality rate and in this next table, you can see the trend of the disease. It's uh, increasing. Uh, although the incidence of MDRTB is low, but also we can observe an increasing trend in my country. So uh, this is the cover of Time magazine in year 2013, which also happens to be the year that I was diagnosed with. So now I'm, I would like to share a more personal story. Um, uh, as I know my story is just one out of the millions of TB sufferers around the world, a lot of whom who never make it to tell their story. Okay, this is my case file. As you can see, once you are, uh, we are diagnosed as TB in my country, you will have to be registered under the National TB Program, so a file will be created. So I would like to share some personal experience as a uh, junior physician in my country when I was doing my internship. So I started my internship in August 2011. I started off as a, uh, in the surgical base posting. So when I was in orthopedic, my first posting, I remember I saw a patient who had a back pain with neurology. So 
he had to underwent spine surgery, but in the end, the diagnosis actually came out to be TB of the spine. And subsequently, I went on to uh, surgical surgery, surgical base. Then I rem remembered one interesting gent middle-aged gentleman who presented with intestinal obstruction. But uh, then he had to underwent surgical to relieve the surgery to relieve the intestinal obstruction. But it turned out to be TB of the gut. So in my point of view, if we had managed to detect them earlier, they might not have to go through all these unnecessary surgeries. So I eventually went on to medical-based posting. We see quite a number of TB patients in medical. So I remember one case is a 19-year-old girl with Down syndrome. She actually presented to us with complaints of cough, fever and weight loss for three weeks. She visited general practitioners and was given antibiotics but did not get any better. So the parents decided to bring her to the hospital. Uh, so we treated her, her as community acquired pneumonia. It was started on IV antibiotics, but despite two days of IV antibiotics, her condition worsened. So uh, the physician in charge decided to test for TB, which came back positive. But we started her on anti-TB straight, but it was too late. She never made it in the end. So I felt quite ill during the end of my medical posting. I was having productive cough, fever, and night sweats, typical of a TB presentation. So I sent my sputum for AFB testing or Zen-Nielsen testing, which it came back negative. But little did I know, my sample was positive proceed to culture, but I guess it was a blessing in disguise. So I eventually got better and continued my uh, training as an intern. And I remember on 30th July 2013, while I was escorting a patient to ultrasound scan, I received a phone call from the respiratory physician. Uh, the first question that he asked was actually, did I mistakenly fill in my name on the patient's uh, requisite form? Which I really hope it was. But So he told me that I have MDR-TB. But at that moment, I did not really catch what does the abbreviation MDR meant to me. But I, I got the word TB, so he asked me to take a chest x-ray. So I went and took a chest x-ray. I remember reviewing my own chest x-ray together with a radiographer. Of course, once I took the x-ray, I tried to look at it myself, which actually, to me, is normal, quite normal. So I went to the respiratory clinic to find my respiratory physician. So I remember him grabbing the x-ray, then was staring at, at the x-ray for some time. Then he handed me a report. When I saw the report, then I realized what does MDR mean. It means multi-drug resistance. My TB strain was resistance to all first-line antibiotics. When I saw the report, I was really scared because there was no second line. It doesn't show any sensitivity to any drugs. Then I was feared that it might be total drug resistance. I, I would not know. And I was so scared, feared for my family, friends, and patients. As I became a clinician to help people, not to harm people. So, but, uh, t so I started crying. So my respiratory physician tried to comfort me and told me, no worries, we have to, because your chest x-ray is fairly normal, so we had to do more investigation to see what is actually going on. But he instructed me to get admitted to the uh, infectious disease ward. And he helped me to call my superiors to relieve me off from my work. So, so I remember I was admitted. Then I was unable to produce any uh, good sample sputum, so I had to do nasogastric lavage to get a proper sample. They sent for AFB, but it was negative. So we proceed to a, uh, manage to get a high resolution CT scan, which actually shows some three in blood changes with opacity at the at, at my right lung. So now they would just like to confirm whether I'm MDR, TB or not. 
So back in 2013, there was no gene expert in the public sector of Malaysia or, or in my side of the country. So we actually had to send the sample across the South China Sea to Kuala Lumpur to get tested. So the results came back a little bit late. We only managed to get the results on the 5th of August. So on your right side, you can see the, um, uh, the re gene expert report. Uh, which came back with pos uh, positive and rifampicin resistant. Uh, on the left side is the LPA results, which actually came back much later in 29th of August. So they initiated treatment on on 7th of August uh, 2013. On this slide, you can see the treatment regime that I was on. So. After five days of uh, starting the treatment, I actually developed rash all over my body. So they had to stop the treatment for one day. And at that time, because I was resistant to all first-line drugs with no LPA results, line pro results available yet, my specialist actually did approach to uh, ask for access to betaculine or delanamide, but was uh, to no avail. So uh, they had to, we had to really challenge the treatment because this treatment had to work. So they started off single agent by single agent, day by day. So to my best thing, I managed to achieve full dose on 21st of August 2013 without any uh, adverse reaction or side uh, rashes or allergic, allergic reaction. So after three and a half weeks inside the hospital, I was finally discharged on 24th of August 2013. So, uh, when I was sick with, when I was done with TB, actually I don't really feel sick, but the treatment actually made me sicker than the disease. So during the initiation on the, of the treatment and and the first month of the treatment, I actually experienced uh, nausea and vomiting. I lost more weight than how I had, how I had TB, but subsequently I gained back. Uh, I also had hypoglycemic episodes, uh, sim signs or symptoms of low sugar. That resulted in reducing my liver processing dose from one gram to 750 mg. And I was on uh, injectables, so I have daily injections for eight months. So after three or four months, the in all the injection sites tends to get hardened. So it makes the injection harder and more painful. So I can only imagine the challenges they have faced in the pediatric group using this drug. So, but throughout the, the treatment, I experienced insomnia and uh, some peripheral neuro, uh, nephro, eh, sorry, neuropathy of my hands and feet, but I can still do my daily work. So of course, luckily for me, and of course treatment worked for me, <laughs> So uh, after one month of full dose treatment, my culture converted and it remained negative throughout the treatment and even until today. Um, so I am very fortunate uh, as my country provides free treatment to, uh, for TB also. And I would say that MDR-TB is the hardest challenge which I face in my life so far. And TB has been around for so long, for centuries. When, when will it end? I mean, no doubt during treatment, I thought of giving up and just end my life and cremate my body so that I won't spread the disease to anyone. But this might be the drug talking because I was on cyclosarine. <laughs> but, in, but in credits to my family, friends, I went, I continued and completed the treatment. So. I think uh, our fight with TB will end because we have to make it our next, ge next generation, generation free of TB. Uh, currently, I'm in clinical research in my country for almost two years now. Uh, I would say that uh, in, it's very different from clinical medicine. Being a good clinician doesn't really, really make a good researcher. <laughs> I am currently mainly looking after uh, a cohort study on cardiovascular risk. So I also tried to participate in bioequivalence and clinical trials. So from my short experience in clinical research, 
I noticed that we need collaborations and and communication among different special specialists to make it work. And regulated bodies sometimes give us a hard time, but it's their job to safeguard our participants and and measure that ethics are properly dealt with. So, uh, so this is my the oldest TB clinic in my region, which I also happen to follow up here. Uh, Malaysia, my country is still mostly facing drug sensitive TB problems with drug sensitive TB, contact tracing, and diagnosing them. Uh, but I expect there will be a rise of MDR TB as like most, in most of the parts of the country. So we will face challenges as there is only one phenotypic central testing in my country at the moment. So as of today, I still do not know how I got MDR TB. I would say that I experienced TB and the social stigmas that it brings. TB respects no borders. TB travels to whichever place and persons that it wants through air. So it has to be a global effort to, to stop TB. Everyone should work together to unite and end TB. Thank you very much.